Hello there, I'm Isabelle and this is my garden. Where today I'm weeding out clovers to put in this little planter box I made. I find clovers adorable, I mean come on, its leaves are shaped like little hearts and that fills my little heart with joy. Obviously, I could have just bought a cute planter from the store, but why spend $15 when I can spend 3 hours building it with trash and $3 worth of supplies? I need a watertight container, so I took an empty milk carton and cut it to the height I wanted. I cut off the part where the lid was, then I opened up the sides and cut off the excess. I'll fold and glue the flappy sides thingy together. I have no idea what they're called. I then painted the carton with a mixture of black paint and Mod Podge, just in case the design would show through the cracks between the wood sticks. In hindsight, I should have lightly sanded the carton first to help the paint adhere to the laminated layer. Anyways, once the paint was dried, I glued these jumbo popsicle sticks all around the carton. Mmm, this is why I should have sanded first. Let's pretend that didn't happen. To finish the edges, I added a corner trim. Quick tip! When using super glue, wear gloves because it's really hard to get off your fingers. I had to use nail polish remover and a good 15 minutes of scrubbing to get it all off. Anyways, now that my hands are clean, I'll stain the wood with watered down acrylic paint. I'll wipe off the excess with a paper towel. I'll set it aside to dry and start working on Bulbasaur. I wanted to make Bulbasaur a bit larger than my usual sculpture, so I'll be using air dry clay instead of polymer clay because air dry clay is cheaper. Quick disclaimer, this is not a tutorial on how to use air dry clay because this is only my second time using it and I'm not even sure I'm doing it correctly. Starting with the head, I made an armature in aluminum foil and covered it with clay, then started shaping the mount. I left it to dry for a few hours. The clay is about 50% dry and it's pretty firm but still a bit damp. I softly sketched where the nose and eyes would go. The head looks like a squirtle head right now, but I'm gonna fix that. I cut out chunks of clay where I'll insert a toothpick and a little cone of aluminum foil to make the ears. When connecting two pieces of clay, you need to score the surface first, then add slip, which is made from clay mixed with a bit of water that has the consistency of peanut butter. It works as a glue for the clay. Fun fact, the French word for slip is barbotin, which is a lot more fun to say. So from now on, I'll say barbotin instead. Est-ce que je devrais faire mon voiceover en français? Once I was done sculpting the ears, I left the head to dry completely. And that took about a week. I had a hard time smoothing the clay when it was still wet. So I'll give it a really good sanding. This clay does sand very easily, which is really nice. Excellent. I carved the nostrils and I also carved the outlines of the eyes. Next, I'll add a bit of clay to make a small eyebrow. I'll also add clay to give the eye more dimension. The symmetry on the right side of the mount was a bit off, so I'll add more clay to fix that. And while I'm at it, I'll redo the right eye and the right eyebrow.
I let it dry completely and it is once again time to sand. Now that the head is nice and smooth, I'll make the teeth from polymer clay. And while we're at it, let's make the tongue. To make sure the tongue would keep its shape, I taped it down with masking tape and blasted it with a hairdryer for a few minutes. It cured the clay just enough for it to retain the curve of the mouth and I'll finish baking it in the oven. For the body, I made a floral armature that I covered in clay. I made holes for the legs and arms and then I'll insert popsicle sticks for extra support. Then I'll add more foil and more clay to make the legs. I did the exact same thing for the arms. I want Bulbasaur to be sitting upright so he can look down and admire the clovers in the planter box. I did a quick check with the head to make sure everything is in proportion. It looks pretty good so I'll try smoothing out the clay as much as I can and leave it to dry completely. I will once again do more sanding. It's a bit annoying to do but it's also a very relaxing task. Let's set that aside and move on to the bowl. I made a foil armature and covered it in clay. Then I'll divide it in six mostly equal parts. I say mostly equal because I didn't measure and totally eyeballed it. Next, I'll add a bit more clay to build up the shape on each section. I did two before realizing I should probably check the size and how it fits with the body. It looked pretty good but the bulb was a bit too high, so I'll remove the bottom part before going any further. I did a second check and it looks a lot better. So now I can finish shaping the bulb. I left it to dry and now we have a giant garlic bulb. Mmm, delicious. And like every other piece so far, I'll give it a nice sanding. I added a chunk of foil to form the neck and I'll cover that in clay. After shaping the neck, I remove the head so the clay won't crack while it's drying. I'll leave it to dry and reattach the head later on. I'll do a bit more sanding. Then I'll vacuum because there's so much dust everywhere. Now that my work surface is clean, I'll make Bulbasaur's claws out of polymer clay and I'll throw these in the oven to cure. While that is baking, I'll attach the head to the body. I super glued a popsicle stick for extra support and I'll add a nice and thick coat of barbotin and clay to make sure the head is secure. I'll try to smooth out the clay as much as I can and I'll leave it to dry. I'll sand the neck and now Bulbasaur is ready for a coat of gesso. I added a drop of green paint to the gesso so I could see where I was applying it. It will serve as a primer for the paint and seal the clay at the same time. Once the gesso was dried, I started to paint the body's base color. Wait, that's not the right color. Hold on. Okay, so it took me a few tries, but I got the base color down and I can start painting Bulbasaur spots. And while I do that, maybe now would be a good time to give this video a like or maybe even consider subscribing.
the bulb gets a few coats of green. And to add a bit of variation, I use different shades of green that I painted in vertical strokes. It's subtle, but it makes it a bit more interesting than just a flat color. I also drilled some holes on each side of the body to insert the vines I made off camera. I'll super glue them in place. And then I'll glue the bulb to the body. I made sure to use a generous amount of super glue and held it tightly in place for a few minutes. Then I glued the tongue and the teeth. Let's glue the claws and after about 80 hours of work, Bulbasaur is complete. Let's go back to the garden. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.